Yours feels like a boat anchor. <laughs> and this is interesting because I don't think I've ever paddled this with a, this is called sort of a Euro paddle. This was the original paddle. And, I mean, it's pretty flexible. You can paddle it with the same stroke that you do. You really don't have to change much, but it really is meant for that high top arm. Yeah. Having a narrower boat helps because you have a more, a higher angle and that, and then you rotate out to the side. So I'm trying to do, so I'm doing the wing stroke paddle now with yours and it works, but it's not really optimized for that. Yours is more optimized for a, like this, lower angle. That's a more traditional sea kayak paddle. But there's no reason I can't do this and I still get some lift out of it. But it feels a little funny. Watch out for the rowers here. This is interesting. So I'm trying to wing paddle with, let me try a vertical. That sort of works. And a horizontal triplane paddle. That sort of works. Low angle. This is interesting. This is offset and I automatically adjusted, not even realizing that it was, oh, I forgot to tell you something. <laughs> so um, I like to do research. I like to do research on paddling. I like that. I'm a retired professor, so I have a research career, but not in paddling. So I just made a very interesting discovery, is that your, your blazer called feathered or offset. Yes. And I used to paddle like that. I used to paddle like that, and I had pain in my right wrist. So a really famous surf ski paddler, South African, Oscar Chapulski said, no, you don't need to offset them like the sprinters do. They like them offset the sprinters because if there's wind, you see how this cuts through better? Right, right. It's not flat. But he says, with the shape of that and the conditions we paddle normally downwind. So you don't need it. So I put them like that, not offset or, or unfeathered as some people call it. And it took me very little time to get used to it and the pain just disappeared completely. Because when you paddle this, you basically have to cock your wrist a little bit to bring that back. So what I just discovered is that you gave me this. I didn't realize that it was feathered like this. And I had absolutely no, I should have done this. But I didn't. So that just shows you how adaptable our bodies are. It just figured it out without me thinking. And I think you did the same thing. Well, this is amazing. I mean, the effort is decidedly less. I'm also noticing there's less noise. And noise to me represents wasted energy. Oh yeah, cavitation. Well, you want to sort of, you don't want to put too much force until it's completely submerged. Or if you're going to put force before it's submerged, it has to ramp up. And this is part of the technique. But what's interesting, you see you're not using your legs at all. You see, you see my knees? And you see my arms are fixed. The, the bottom arm stays extended throughout the entire stroke, the top one 90 degrees. They're just an extension of my torso. They are just the attachment point. Now I can do this too, and there's nothing wrong with doing this. I mean, this I call this bicycling with your arms. You see, I'm using my triceps and biceps, yeah. and that's a way to get some triceps and biceps in your paddle, nothing wrong with that. But it's not efficient in terms of going super fast. Yeah and endurance because your arms will tire out. Your arms are puny compared to this <laughs> and this. You ever you see what your, lat, your, your latissimus dorsi muscles look like? They completely cover your back. They're these huge muscles. And that's what, what, what one that we try to use. So you adapted to that zero offset and the wing with no problem. So where do I find And them? we're all geezers, <laughs> <laughs> right? They're expensive. I mean, you pay three to four hundred dollars for a paddle like that. Uh, but I have it at the. Uh, okay, let let me make a, a quick adjustment to it because your boat is wider, 
which means it should be a little longer. I have it on the minimum length. Actually, my paddle. I have trouble with my shoulders at times, and I like a smaller paddle just to make it more strong. Well, see, then what you what you want, but you want to be able to get across the boat. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And and you really then you want a smaller blade. That's what you oh, want blade, because yeah. that's really going to determine how much resistance it's like okay. upping the gear like on a bicycle mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i would go for the long now that's 215 now and that probably would be better for you for with a lower angle you need a, a lower angle because your boat is wider and if you want to see if you can sort of use your extend the side that you're paddling on but notice your bottom arm, you're, you bend it, which is fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't do what you're doing, but it's not the official, it's not the kind of stroke that would optimize what you're doing with that. And you're not getting the entire blade in the water. I can see the E sticking out. And that may be a function too of it being too short or just getting used to it or bringing your upper arm upper hand up a little higher but I mean you're going pretty nicely there that's it get it get it more in but I mean at this point you do it remarkably well it's just to play around with it and see how it you know how it handles and what it does and what's nice about it too well I like this one too if you get into tough situations this is the most important stroke you need to learn the bracing stroke and that works even better, I think, than this. You see the rib? Because it just, it's like a water ski on the water. Oh, yeah. You know, so one of the things you want to do is take a couple of strokes and then put your, your wrist on the opposite knee. And you want like a 45 degree angle. And this is loose and just let it find. And you see, you can really support yourself there. So if you're in tough conditions, you're bracing like that in this side. And when we, we, we do downwind paddling with the downwind waves, like when you see the white caps in the afternoon in the summer, well, when we catch a wave and we're letting the wave push us, we're always bracing on one side or the other because we need that extra stability. Well, yes, because you get a wave picking up the bow and the stern, you're the wave yeah. flying. I've had that yeah. So yeah, you can play it, you can play it. You can play on Venice Beach, it's a yeah, great place.